Greetings, I am Cross Knights, and this is Let's Play Xenogears. On the last episode, uh, I told Ellie to stay home and watch the non-existent kids while the men go off and fight, and I said it almost as dickish as that. <laughs> you can't handle anything, you're a woman. No, I, I didn't really say because she's a woman, it's just he's concerned because she kind of completely freaked out when we, um... When we had to kill Hammer, so... He's concerned because all of the enemies are actually going to be amalgamations of other people, and he thinks that she's going to, like, flip out. Also, look at this. If you go into the engine room, the old man will smack you one. That is totally not something that the doctor would say. Do they even... <laughs> and he's screaming it, like, you got it. whatever. I felt that was a misplaced line. Let's just go in here and talk to Ellie, see if we can make this better. Uh, sorry about what just happened now. Forgive me, but I want to explain. Now for the first time, people on both Earth and Solaris are becoming one. But then, not all of them are strong like the crew of the ship, or the people in Chevet. Even we almost lose sight of our future at times, so you can imagine what regular people go through. That's why people need someone like you to depend on, as a light to guide us. You free the hearts of the people that have been used by tools of the Ministry for hundreds of years. Ellie, it was you! And now your body doesn't just belong to you alone anymore. That's why I can't let you be in any danger. That's why I don't want you to fight anymore. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Huh? We used to be enemies, but now we're together like this. In the beginning, I think I saw myself in you. We seem to overlap, you being in a similar situation that I was in. When I was with you, I didn't feel alone or apprehensive. That's why I thought I liked you. But it wasn't that. I simply didn't have the courage to look at my true self. I turned to you to run away from it all. I mistook that for love. But it's different now. I can face my own problems. I am me, and you are you. It has all become clear to me now. I also learned that I really do need you. It's not because I need you for security for my problems. I need you because I truly love you. Ellie. I know what you're saying, Faye. I know why you're concerned for my safety. But you know, I'm... scared. I fear we may never see each other again. I just have this feeling. Don't worry, I won't die. No, it's not that. It's something completely different. It's as if I'm being torn apart by something I can't resist. That I'm no longer me. Even if you come back safely, it's still... It just feels so uneasy. That is why I need to go with you. I can't bear to be away from you. I feel the same way. Ever since that time I met you in that forest, I think it's the same feeling that you've been having. I've also been running to you. But I have to solve my own problems. I can't throw my problems on you. There's another me. Id is within me. I fear that at any moment Id may awaken within me. You're the only one that's been able to keep me from giving in to Id. It is because you were always by my side that I was able to keep from losing myself. I promise that I will return to you. So, that is... Ellie, I want you to be my reason to return. To be my home that I can return to. Ellie, if you will wait for me to come back, even if we were in totally different places, as long as you stay by my side, I know I'll be able to do anything. Oh, Faye.
Woo! Sorry, I had to. Fade to black. Ha <laughs> ha! Implied intercourse. Are you going now? Yeah, sorry, did I wake you? It's okay. I've been awake all along. All along? Uh-huh. I was watching over you while you slept. And before I realized it, it was morning. Well, well I'm off. Alright then. Do be careful. Yeah, I will. Oh, could you hold on to this for me? What is this? Is this a pendant? I don't know whose it is, but it seems it was on me when I was brought to Lahan. It may be mine, or it could be... It could be... Ah, uh, nothing. Will you just hold on to it for me? Alright, I'll hold on to it for you. Thanks. Well, I guess it's goodbye. Oh, Faye. Yeah? Thank you. Ellie, are you okay about this? Don't you want to be with him? Yes, but it's because I believe in him. Just being close to a person in itself is indication of love, is it? But men are selfish. When something big happens, they say, It's too dangerous. You can't come. They treat women like we're weaklings. Although, it is true that I can't help Bart and friends much anymore. That's not true. Everyone wants something special waiting for them. Someone who will protect the place that they return to. If you don't have that peace of mind, then you'll not be able to get anything done. Men try to tough it out as much as I can, and then some. They're cute in the way they do that, aren't they? Yeah, you're right. Anyway, we have things to do too now. And while we do them, let's pray that everyone gets back safely. To God? No. To your own innermost feelings that everyone believes in. What's wrong? I knew it. Yeah, it must be. What? Ellie, it's like everyone says. You must be the reincarnation of Sophia. You have no way of knowing the Nissan sex teachings, but what you say... Well, it's exactly what Sophatia always said. Yeah, yes, that might be. The first time I visited here, I had the most amazing feeling. Familiar, sad. Like I had visited here in my dreams many times. I know where each room is and what's in them. I just know that I have been here in the distant past. Before, if you had spoken to me about this, I would have brushed it off with a laugh. But now... Now, I can more or less believe it. The things I couldn't do then... I'm probably trying to do now. Things you couldn't do? Yes. Things I couldn't do. That's right. Sometimes women need to stay at home and guard it so that men can fight in war, I guess. 
Dwelling back to the Solarian incubator, he ensured forces we took to the floating continent of Manabonides. So it is a continent? I'm pretty sure it's a ship. Actually, I'm pretty sure I know what's going on. It was the central hull of a Kasloshal spacecraft with a diameter of at least 40 Celts. Yes, it is definitely a spaceship. It's actually a spaceship you've seen once before, though you may not realize it. Judging from the condition of the hull, we estimated the ship to be thousands of years old. I'd say about 10,000 years old. It was determined, by examining the inside of the wreckage, that some kind of accident occurred to the ship 10,000 years ago, which forced the crew to crash into our planet. Alien beings that came to our planet from a far-off galaxy eons ago. Could it possibly have been that our ancestors were the passengers on the ship and had crash-landed here on this planet? Seeing God in his divine wisdom, Raziel's tree, which, it is said, lies here in Mamanon. We proceed further. Okay, the place that you have seen this ship before is in episode 1 of Xenogears, opening cutscene. This is the ship from that cutscene. I'm sorry it took 55 episodes for you to see what was going on with that or how that related to anything that happened in the game. But yeah, if you want to see it again, check out episode 1. You can see the whole cutscene again. So we're going to want to open up the menu. Is that... No, I'm not taking Satan, if, I, if at all possible. Let me just save. I don't want to take Satan since I hit him before, so I think I'm going to replace him with Zybazen, and then really hope there's no on-foot combat. You're not going to let me do it again, are you? Wait. Okay, good. If I want to continue, I wouldn't have been able to change my members. Yep, Satan, you've seen enough action. Maria, I haven't used you in ages. Choo Choo, you should have stayed on the Eudrasiel. Now, I think I upgraded Zybazen, but I don't quite remember. I hope I did. What type of item does she have? Because I have not checked her ship in a very long time. Armor 4, I know I have better than that. Got electrical damage down and more armor than you've got right now. And what's her response? Her response is zero. Whatever. I should just do this. Yeah, that'll give you some response and more armor. And this is probably good. Maybe we'll give you a better one, though. Sometimes the smaller ones are better, though, because you don't need to use up as much fuel, but... I think for someone like her, we'll go with one heal at 50, and that'll do her. Bart, haven't seen your gear in ages, either. In fact, you have a whip that's ridiculously more powerful. That's how long it's been. You've got cra- Oh, the last time I guess I used him was when Chavette was under attack. Hiccup? Don't hiccup. Hiccups for, for hickeys, losers, tickets. I don't know what I'm saying. E-thing. Increases ether. Why are you have that? What the... You don't need that. There we go. I like the light armor better just because it gives a response. And Faye, I'm sure, has good items. He's got interesting items. He doesn't have any extra defense. Despite that, he's got decent defense, so I'm not all that worried. Okay. I think we're ready to go to a part of the game I have not practiced, so I have no idea what's going to happen. Oh, one last thing. Um, I I equipped Maria with less than state-of-the-art equipment, because I don't think she's ever going to fight if I can help it. And you, I gave Bart like his Wonder Whip and the good equipment, but Faye doesn't need this wizard, the wizardry ring anymore. He's almost got all of his death blow power. I took an item off Maria that I didn't realize that she had. It's apparently an accessory, which means it can go over armor. That is the strength of a stamina ring and a uh, strength S ring. So that's a great, amazing item that I should have stripped from her a long time ago. She, d why does a apron? Uh, what is a battle apron? That doesn't even... Whatever. <laughs> Those don't exist. Anyway, continue with the game. Battle apron. Sometimes your souffles fight back. Where the hell am I? Yeah, I, I haven't practiced this part of the game. I don't know what's gonna happen. Oh, crap. Wait, I did practice this. I remember now. And I got really confused. It's just a boss battle. In the depths, we saw an alien form. It was partially rotten and petrified. A giant. A grotesque being. 
It gave off an inexplicable air, air of intimidation. Perhaps it was more than a gut reaction. Perhaps it was the fear of the absolute that came from the very depths of our inherited instincts. I really hope everyone has a healer, because I remember this boss battle and I did not beat it. <laughs> if everyone doesn't have a healer, I'm probably going to end up doing it again. It's really one of the weirdest things ever, I gotta say. Alright, let's start attacking it and then you'll see why it's so weird. Decent damage. Completely and utterly healed. Alright, we'll have Bard attack. Completely and utterly healed. There's nothing I can do about this. But I need everyone to build up power as much as I can for the first few turns. Everyone has taken half damage. Now that's including him. So what I think I need to do is basically pick my moment. Right? Alright, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have everyone charged from now on. I don't know if this is the right way to do it, but I can I can hope that it is. Uh-oh, what are you doing? He's summoning the cosmos on me, apparently. What type of damage is that gonna do? Decent damage! So basically, he, his main attacks are just gonna keep on having my HP. You better have a healer. Crap, I have screwed up! You know what? The whole reason of, like, practicing a little bit ahead is to avoid this type of crap. So Bart's screwed. There's nothing I can do to heal him. He's going to keep on using that half attack, and eventually he's going to use an attack... Uh-oh. You're kidding me. You were freaking kidding me. Now I remember why I didn't beat this boss battle. Okay, this is a problem. Uh, when I first tried to beat this boss battle, this happened. It froze. And I thought... I hoped it was just a coincidence. And I stopped playing it. I'm, I'm remembering all of this now. Now it's happening at the same part again. This could be a permanent impasse. I might not be able to do anything about this. The only reason that I might not be screwed, and this is a crazy coincidence, is that my roommate also owns this disc. So I'm gonna try her disc and really hope that it goes after this. If that doesn't work, um... There's a PlayStation 1 here, I'll try it on that. If that doesn't work... Well, this LP is over, and I'm very, very sorry, so I'm gonna go and try that now. Oh my god. Alright, my roommate's disc is in. Hopefully... Hopefully that won't happen again. Amazing coincidence, by the way, that she owns this game, because... Oh. No, I haven't built up my power yet, I'm gonna let that one go. Hopefully that's not a mistake. I want to attack a little bit here. Alright, so what I think I have to do... Um, it's gonna keep on halving its HP. You can see what its HP is. Actually, it didn't fully heal there. Maybe I'd get two chances? No, so... whatever. No, it would've fully healed. No, it didn't. Whatever. I believe it has, um... 40,000 HP. So I have to keep on getting it to have its own HP. Without attacking it, of course, because then it just heals it all back. And eventually it'll be low enough that I can take it out in one blow. That's the current theory, anyway. I also need to mitigate my own damage periodically by healing, so I have to be careful about fuel consumption. Because I may have to do that several times. And if I'm wrong, uh, I, I don't have any plan B. <laughs> I haven't beaten this before because my disc was broken. But seriously, that was like... Whenever I'm LPing a console game, my biggest nightmare is that something like what just happened will happen. So the fa- and... The fact that it would happen while I'm, what, 60 hours in? I don't even have a real contingency plan, and I shouldn't talk like this is in the past tense. Admittedly, the chances of two discs actually screwing up the same part seem incredibly unlikely, unless it's some type of PlayStation 2 incompatibility thing. Which is possible, but if that's the case, as I said, I do have a PlayStation 1 here. Again, because my roommates have it. Good god, did I ever move into the right house. Alright, he's doing the move, so no more attacking him. But Faye has a very powerful move lined up for when I need it. So, alright. 
Let's have everybody fix their frame. So he's only going to be able to do this one other time. I got to be careful with that then. But I don't want anyone to die just yet, that is for sure. Fix frame. And then we're going to turn our boosters off so that we don't keep on wasting fuel. Oh, and as you can obviously see, I went back and gave Billy a healing thing. <laughs> I also gave him some ether armor, because I figure maybe, since I'm pretty sure this, this guy's attack is only ether based, it might protect him some. There he goes again. Now watch how much health he has. Yeah, you notice he only has 10,000 now. So if I did 10,000 health, like 10,000 damage to him, he would die. But I can't do 10,000 damage one attack. No one can. I definitely need to get him down to 5,000. All right, he's going down to 5,000. I might be able to do it now, but let's not take any damn chances, right? <laughs> Let us have everybody... Oh, he's in infinite mode. You jumped the gun, dude. You jumped the damn gun. <laughs> Whatever. Fix frame. Faye's gonna be the one who deals the killing blow, it looks like. So it actually doesn't matter if they heal, but I'm gonna heal anyway, because we want our delicious experience points, don't we? And Bart's gonna be pretty much out of fuel. He just needs to use his half move one more time, and I'm gonna steamroll his face hole. Steamroll the face hole! I'm gonna be bringing her back. She didn't get a time to shine here, did she? Incidentally, <laughs> whatever crazy attack that he did in order to freeze my game, I don't think he did it this time. Meaning, I probably could have gone through with the other disc, but I would have needed to rely on random chance. Which really would not have been fun. Alright, phase ultimate attack. It is nice to know that I wouldn't have been completely screwed, at least not at this point. It's possible there's another part in the game where I would have frozen, but... Woo, that should do it. Unless I'm wrong. What was that? That was his final death attack, I guess. Did I get ridiculously lucky that he lived, or does it just do all but one HP damage? I don't know. Interesting. It, that was more of a pu Oh, dear. Fade's ultimate ether attack. I don't remember if it's useful or all, but that's pretty cool. Uses the power of the beginning of the universe to destroy my enemies. That... was the ultimate power? We came onto an enormous cavern that was big enough to swallow the whole continent of Advet. In its center were two gently glowing objects. It was the source of divine wisdom. It was Razel's tree. I don't remember any of this well. At least it's not told through chair sitting. Oh, it's still being rendered, it seems. Also doesn't look much like a tree. And the cavern itself was a gigantic computer called Raziel. Ah. and the wisdom of God hidden within Raziel. We found the unthinkable when he accessed its data. A large unmanned strategic weapon and its battalion of terminal interface weapons traveled from star system to star system, and a gigantic mothership was used to carry them. The creation of the, the Malkia Angels, God's army to reign over the vast universe with, and the construction of a divine ark. You know how hard it is to read that against that background? Good God. These weapons were called Yabe, the, inner, the Interplanetary Invasion Weapon System. 
What the Gazelle Ministry was pursuing was right here. According to the data, the giant rotating organism we just defeated was in fact the nucleus of this system. We were on the verge of accessing a data for an object called Zohar. The central neural circuit and the power source controlling the entire system from the weapon to the mothership. And suddenly, he appeared. Ah, the hidden data from the Raziel tree. Move away from there. This matter is far too weighty for the likes of you. Damn! We were so close! We must protect it with our lives! We can't let them have the Raziel data! You handle them. I'll try to extract as much data as I'm able to. If anything goes wrong, I will destroy this whole place. Whoa, oh, I wonder what would have happened if we took the dock with us. Who would have been at that terminal? What if we oh took the dock God. with us? Who would have been at that terminal? Sad. Ignore the robots, they are of no consequence. So, look at his gear name, Alpha Wattal. Oh, God, he's trying to pull me off right away. If you've been paying attention, it makes complete sense that his gear is also named Wattal. And if you haven't been paying attention, I don't blame you. The story is really complicated. It's pretty easy to miss things, though they've said it a few times at this point. Where you see Ellie as the second advent of Sophia and Faye, ah, uh, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> Faye's dead. That's great. That's an excellent way to start. Well, you know what? Maybe Graf is a cheater and cheat. Oh, look at him cheating. Did you see how he just cheated right there? That is a cheater face McGee. If you actually take the letters from Latin and you still spell out graph as an anathemic gram, it actually is the Latin version of Cheater Face McGee. They take more words to do that. Yep. It's all completely plausible. Two of us are all oh, she hasn't even been hit yet. Clearly she will save us with her accurate hits. That's what happens when you're a big dumb robot. Ah! You know what? I gotta say, Alpha Wattal looks really cool, but that that stomp attack? No. No. That looks... It's just like Irish jig on your body. It looks dumb. Yo, you Drassiel, help me out here! Shoot inside of this cavern as you are wont to do. Zero damage. I figured that would happen. But I also figured, at this point, might as well do variety. It's not like anything's working against him anyway. I think, though I can't say for sure, that the kanji appearing in that attack is the one for murder. Hit! Hit! Boosh! Well, that did damage. If we attack him with attacks like that 20 more times, I'm sure he'll die. Stop ether engines as if he used ether attacks anyway. I uh, Overkill! Overkill! Even if he was at full health, he would have died. Maria would have died from that. And then there was one. I have the Grav Cannon! A weapon so powerful her father tried to seal it. But against him, alas. Now get out of that! Irish jig. I'm pretty sure she's not gonna survive that one. That's weird, that second attack didn't do any damage. Yeah. Missile pods! I could heal her, but what's the point? We're outclassed. It may be obvious to you, but we're not supposed to win this fight. I think there's like an FAQ that like it is possible to beat him, but you need to do ridiculous things and I you'd have to prepare from pretty early in the game in order to do it. And I don't really care. <coughs> it makes more sense that you would lose here. Ugh. I guess that's all you can take for now. Are you frustrated? But it is only natural. After all, you are imperfect. Imperfect? Yes. You are lacking now. The absence of wrath is the impetus for you utilizing your true strength. Wrath? 
The drive to massacre and annihilate. The compulsion to destroy your opponents. Such wrath is power for your soul. By eliminating your foe, you obtain your first sublimation of that drive. It is a very sublimation that draws out the hidden powers within oneself. But clinging to reason, suppressing your wrath and desire, makes releasing your true power a dream within a dream for you. You already know this. When wrath appears in your heart, the machine responded. Did it not? What drew out such power from your sheen was truly the drive of your soul. It was your id. The sign of the purpose you've been seeking. The mark of the natural-born assassin. You're wrong. That's absolutely untrue. I... I'm not id. I... The time has come. I'll take your soul and draw its power out to its limit. Enough! <sighs> what are you stopping me for? He is bait. If you kill the bait, the precious bird we wish to capture will fly away. You know, a very important bird needed to fulfill my earnest desire. You understand, don't you, Lycan? Suit yourself. We shall crucify them. In the land of Golgata, to the west of here. Collect all the broken gears. And you'll notice that uh, the executioner, who has been revealed to be Meng, is also here, just standing and observing, as she is wont to do. When Fane and the others arrived in the deepest part of Mammonon, I was looking after the mutated people in Nissan. People mutating, one after another. Like some eternal nightmare that made me wonder just how long I would have to keep on nursing them. Are you okay? You haven't had any rest, have you? I can handle things on my own for a while. Why don't you go out for a walk? Thank you, but I'll be alright. I'd rather keep busy so that I don't have to worry about things too much. Is that it? Hey! Ellie, what's that? This? Can I see it? Just as I thought. That's the pendant of Nissan. But why do you have it, Ellie? It's FaZe. I'm holding on to it for him. But it feels as if I've always worn it. Hmm. When you wear that, you look even more like Sophia. Really? Hmm. Flattery won't get you anything, you know. Anyway, we need to hurry up and test the new mutation suppressant assembler on these other people here. We can't afford to have them change any further. Got what? What the hell just happened? Oh no. Something has happened to Faye and the others. What the? I don't get the missile pendant. It's not... It was just like... Boop. Overcome by indescribable fear, I decided to ascend to Chevette, which was stationed in the skies above Nissan. Awaiting me there was a transmission from Krellian. He told me that if I wanted to save Faye and the others... I would have to come to Golgata. Krellian wanted me. In order to save Faye and my other friends, I departed in the last Omni gear left remaining in Chevette. My previous fear of riding in this machine was surmounted by my desire to rescue the people dear to me. 
By the way, that pendant in the background that's been in the background this entire time is the Nissan pendant. Really? We're gonna do this? We're gonna do this in a chair-esque cutscene? Ugh. Are you serious about going it alone? Krellian told me to come by myself. I can't afford to break the agreement. So please, stay behind and protect everyone here. But it's a trap. I know. Then why? If I do not go, Faye and the others will be executed for sure. Krellian isn't concerned with anyone else but me. So what makes you think that he's going to hold up his part of the bargain? Do you have any way of knowing that he will definitely save your friends by doing this? No. Then it's suicide! It might be. But... I've made it this far because Faye and the others. Because they accepted me as their friend. If you go away, what about us? What about all the people who have assembled in Nissan that you leave behind? Everyone is depending on you for their spiritual support. The people of Nissan will be fine. They can stand on their own feet without any support from me. This is also true of all of you. Right? But why do you do so much for him? I don't know. I guess it's a woman's prerogative to be selfish, perhaps. A woman's prerogative? I'm not a holy woman of any sort. I'm just a regular woman. I get angry, I cry, I laugh. Although at times I can resent others, I also know how to love others. Loving whole masses of people at times, and just loving one person for the rest of the time. I am in supreme bliss when I am embraced by the man that I love. Giving what I have to him, and receiving what he gives to me, when we become one flesh. That is the moment that I am most at peace. It is my prerogative as a woman to simply want to save the man that I love! Boss... I'm sorry for saying such selfish things. I'll go and do all that I can for my friends. So I want you all to do whatever you can for our friends here. Well, I had better get going now. I like that they used those characters again, because I felt like they just kind of disappeared after a while, which bothered me. Um, extremely sorry. I need to freaking end it here. I've been hit with robot voice two times. My voice is extremely sore. I will be starting directly from this scene. I know it's kind of a cliffhanger, but again, I'm un... I would be able to do a lot more hour-long episodes if I didn't run into, like, bajillions of problems. And logically, I probably should have cut up that last episode, but whatever. There wasn't any extremely good place to stop there, if I remember correctly. So... I am Cross Knights. On the next episode, the final Omni Gear will hopefully see some action, and hopefully not while I'm sitting in a chair talking about it. This disc actually worked. Oh, that was a close call, wasn't it? See ya!